Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and to a very exciting video that I have for you today. It's going to be a collab with my friend Melissa here on YouTube. Her channel is Melissa Gold and of course I'm going to leave that in the description box below. Hello to all of you new people as well who might be here from Melissa's channel. My name is Mariam and <laughs> I believe this is the first time I've ever said my name out loud on YouTube. It's totally okay if you call me Mariam because... Mariam? Mariam? Yes, Mariam. It's totally okay if you call me that because technically that is how you would pronounce my name in if you are a native English speaker. Clearly I'm not a na native English speaker so I'm just pronouncing my name the way that I would pronounce my name. So I recently reached out to Melissa on Instagram with the idea of doing a collab video because Melissa is one of my favorite people to follow on YouTube. I love her channel for so many reasons. First of all, Melissa is absolutely gorgeous. She is such a pleasant youtuber to watch. She's very like calm and composed and I just love the way she talks, not to mention the beautiful Australian accent. I love her content as well because she does very varied videos. She has a uh, she does a lot of reviews and swatches. She has a very varied collection, very different compared to mine. And one of my favorite videos from her to watch is the Project Ten Wares. It's a super cool concept where she doesn't really do tutorials but she just plays with like the same palette or the same brand and she creates 10 different looks and her looks are always very very creative. So I absolutely love watching Melissa. Please go check out her channel if you haven't already because I'm sure you will love it. So I reached out to her with several ideas of what kind of video we would like to do and I'm very happy that she picked the one she did because this is actually an idea of a video that I've had for a really long time and I thought that it was so cool that she agreed to do it with me because I think we might have very different perspectives on this and just to introduce the topic of today's video we're going to talk about three brands... three? three? <laughs> We're going to talk about three brands that we are absolutely loyal to and we would always purchase from and three brands that we would never purchase from or we have no interest in. There's going to be like a very positive and a very negative side to this video and I think that because of our different makeup taste and different collections we probably gravitate towards different brands in both categories but I'm actually quite curious how this is going to turn out and whether there's going to be any overlap. I don't want to start on a negative note, I feel like it's a bit of a downer to start on a negative note and of course it's a bit of a downer to end on a negative note too, but I feel like that's better than starting on a negative note. So I am going to start with the three brands that I am loyal to. So the first brand I want to talk about is one that I have loved for such a long time and I have such a deep connection to and that is Urban Decay. So Urban Decay, I think means a different thing to me than it means to a lot of you guys because a lot of you who come from the US and have been exposed to Urban Decay pretty much ever since the brand started have a different idea of how Urban Decay is. For you Urban Decay is more of that grungy, bad girl, you know, image that um, they've built for so many years. And while I understand where you're coming from, I've only been exposed to Urban Decay for the past 5-6 years at most. And to me Urban Decay has a very different vibe. To me Urban Decay is my happy place. It's where I go to if I want a beautiful colorful palette like the electric palette or I would like to reach for something a little more basic like my Urban Decay Naked Heat palette or I want a range of 120 lipsticks with beautiful formulas by the way. Today I'm wearing one of my favorites which was from a limited edition collection but nevertheless it's this is my favorite bullet lipstick formula I absolutely love Urban Decay for so many reasons like I said first of all it's like my happy brand my happy place I associate them with cheerful joyful colorful creative and um, I really love the quality of their makeup I think they're always so creative with packaging Urban Decay has a certain image they've lived up to that image of like professional makeup brand uh, with a little bit of an edge to it. They never stir the pot. You know, in a world of makeup drama and makeup drama channels, because apparently that's a thing nowadays, Urban Decay just never stirs the pot. They do their own thing, they create their makeup, that's it. That being said, I don't know what's going on with Urban Decay, but in the past half a year, it's been boring me for the last half a year and I'm really bummed about it because I've been waiting to spend my money on something Urban Decay and I haven't been interested in buying absolutely anything from them. And it's not like them to release such boring things like that Born to Run collection. I appreciate the idea behind it, 
I think the actual packaging and the whole concept behind that collection is really cool, but the palette itself, what is that? It's very autumnal, it's very subdued, it's not like Urban Decay to release something like this in the midst of summer. So, I almost feel the urge to like write a message to Wendy and be like, Wendy, dude, what's going on? You know, I'll, I'll fly over to Urban Decay, I'll talk to you over Skype if you want, we can exchange ideas. I have some pretty smooth ideas about what we can do for Urban Decay's next release. First of all, how about a duochrome naked palette? Wouldn't that be sweet? Like, you know, a naked palette with duochrome neutral shadows, like neutral shadows in a variety of different colors with really cool shifts to them. Wouldn't that be awesome? Second of all, I've been waiting for an electric part 2 for the past 3 years and you haven't delivered. Where is my electric 2 palette? Why are you discontinuing the original? What's going on? Worst comes to worst, we can always create more moon dust eyeshadows. I'm up for that. So I don't know what's going on with your Urban Decay, but please, please, please get back on the horse, start making cheerful, joyful, happy makeup again, so that I can spend all of my money on you, because I love your brand. The next brand that I am absolutely loyal to is, uh, without a doubt, Anastasia Beverly Hills. Anastasia is a brand that I've only kind of been buying from and experiencing in the past one, one and a half year at most which pretty much coincides with them opening their European website because before they were pretty inaccessible to me. Being exposed to the brand a little bit more, I've developed such a respect and loyalty to them that it almost surprises me personally because I never thought Anastasia would be one of my personal favorite brands. A couple of years ago all I associated Anastasia with was kind of like old lady brow product makeup. And I feel like there is a reason why Anastasia has been progressing as it is, um, as it has as a brand in the past few years and I think that kind of comes together with Claudia or Norvina, whatever you call, wanna call her, the daughter of Anastasia who I think took the wheel as creative director in the past couple of years and things like Modern Renaissance came on the market, subculture and all of these really cool creative ideas. I think Norvina is probably the creative genius behind the recent success of Anastasia. I don't think it's her mom, but I think it was a genius move on her mom to let her steer the wheel because she's doing a great job at it. So to me, Anastasia Beverly Hills is like that classy brand that isn't afraid to push the boundaries of makeup. Last year when they released Subculture, I was blown away by the color story of that palette. Nobody had put a palette on the market that had this beautiful, unique and kind of innovative color story on the market. When everyone was releasing browns and oranges, they put this on the market. Not to mention like things like the Moonchild Glow Kit and the Aurora Glow Kit, recently the Dream Glow Kit. I know that Indies have been doing dual chrome highlighters for a really long time, but let's face it, mainstream brands haven't really and I think Moonchild was probably one of the very first truly duochrome highlighters to come on the market. So I really appreciate that they are not afraid to push the boundaries of the makeup world and they are not afraid to come out with new formulas, um, controversial formulas if you will. But I absolutely love the quality of Anastasia products. I love how they do their launches. It's always very professional. It, it's never overhyped. They tell you that they're going to release a product and it pretty much comes within a week or so. They don't tease you for months on end until you're like, okay, now I've lost interest completely. They just say something, they do it, they always have enough for everybody to go around. It's not a limited edition where everything is sold out in 10 seconds and you need to develop anxiety from buying makeup because, I'm sorry, buying makeup should never be associated with anxiety. There's always enough for everybody. Just like Urban Decay, they never stir the pot, they're never involved in any sort of weird drama. The only drama that they were involved in was last year with Subculture and I feel like they handled it pretty well. They threw in their two cents, some people might say it was a little too much, I don't think it was a little too much and that was it. Page closed, moving on. One last thing I want to mention because I'm kind of sort of stalking Norvina every now and then because I'm curious about her. She seems to be a very hardworking person who basically lives, breeds and poops Anastasia Beverly Hills. Uh, I think she just works all the time. And the other thing that really impresses me about her, if, if you go on her Instagram page, 
people comment on her pictures and she actually responds. Like she responds to a bunch of people, which if you are like her and you have a busy life as she does, you probably don't give two shits about all these people and you don't have time to respond. But she takes the time of her day to respond, which I think is very professional of her. I think I've rambled about Anastasia enough and now I want to tell you about the third and final brand that I am loyal to. I could probably go on but I think we should stick to a certain limited amount of brands so that we don't have to sit here for three hours. So the third brand that I am loyal to is kind of an underdog on YouTube and that is Inglot. Inglot is a Polish makeup brand that uh, you can find in quite a few places around the world and I know that a lot of you have probably heard about Inglot but you haven't heard a lot and you haven't really been exposed to them as much as a lot of these other brands. For one thing I think Inglot just doesn't have the aggressive and pushy PR that a lot of other companies have and that is one of the reasons that they kind of remain under the radar. That being said, I love every single product that I have from Inglot. I don't know if anyone remembers this but the very first like super colorful good quality eyeshadows that came out on the market were basically the electric palette and around the time sugar pill was created. But you know what? Inglot already had these eyeshadows in their collection I feel like before that because I have this beautiful um, quintet here of their rainbow eyeshadows with the beautiful yellow, the beautiful orange, the beautiful green, the purple and I have a palette a few palettes actually from them filled with very colorful, very good quality eyeshadows that already existed five or six years ago. So when nowadays everyone talks about all these new brands that are making bright colorful eyeshadows with good quality, nobody ever mentions that Inglot's been doing that for years. To me they're kind of that player that stands on the sidelines and you know does his thing, remains professional, creates beautiful good quality makeup but nobody ever talks about because they just never get to play. They just never get to be called on the field to play. And I want to talk more about Inglot even on my channel because I have quite a lot of their products and I never really quite mentioned them. But you know what? I love Deuteline. I have went through like a whole bottle of their mixing medium which is called Deuteline. I have a bunch of their colorful gel liners and I absolutely love them. They're my favorite colorful liners to use. They have beautiful like loose eyeshadows, like glittery eyeshadows and like I said their like pressed eyeshadows are absolutely beautiful quality and they're also very affordable. They recently did a collection with JLo and I feel like that is the first time that they've kind of been trying to you know expand their market a little bit and be a little bit more modern and relevant if you will but still nobody ever talks about Inglot because they don't take people on lavish trips they don't have pushy PR with affiliate codes and they don't send PR packages probably. I don't think I've ever heard anyone. Have you heard of anyone receiving PR packages from Inglot? I don't think so. But that's not a good reason to ignore them and I would really love to give Inglot somewhat more love. So yes, my third brand that I remain loyal to is Inglot. Now that we have concluded the positive part of this video, we can start with the more negative one. And I want to mention a few things before I start talking about the brands that I am not never going to purchase from because I wanted to make a few... I don't want to say disclaimers because I feel like it's stupid to say things like oh this is my own opinion, obviously we don't have to agree. Of course it's my own opinion, you're on my channel, you're hearing what I'm talking about and um, we're having one of those conversations where we can agree to disagree because I'm sure that a lot of you probably love and purchase from these brands and that's fine. Absolutely nothing against that, just my personal opinion that I am not going to purchase from these brands so that's pretty clear. And the second thing I wanted to mention is, first of all, if you knew me in real life, I'm a very direct person. I don't sugarcoat anything. I say things that can be construed as very rude and very offensive and maybe they are but that's really how I feel about it. When it comes to brands that I will never purchase from it's kind of like a gut feeling for me. You know when you meet someone and your first impression is either oh I think I'm going to really like this person or you're like I don't think you and I are going to there's no connection there, there's no there's no click. I feel like that's a little bit how I go about purchasing makeup. It's not just about the makeup itself. Sometimes it's a gut feeling about the brand, generally speaking. So, 
on the top of my list of brands that I am never going to purchase from in a million years, even if they came to my door and they were like, here, have this free makeup, is Morphe. Oh, Morphe, where, where do I even begin? Okay, let's start from the beginning. I remember the very first time I heard about Morphe. It was several years ago when I was still following Jaclyn Hill and I remember her pulling out that palette and like showing these eyeshadows in this super ugly black plastic palette and she was like raving about them because they were like one or two dollars and they were such good quality and I was looking at her video and I was like interesting, that looks like one of those 88 type of palettes that I can buy on eBay. I had one of those palettes. It was fine if you're a beginner, but it was nothing to write home about. It was certainly not something to rave about as if it's the next best thing invented after french fries. It was just mm, mediocre quality eyeshadows that are cheap, in housed in a cheap packaging. Quite frankly, if you removed the Morphe logo from it, you could slap any other thing on it and you could sell it on eBay, it would be exactly the same thing in my mind. Imagine my surprise when in a short period of time a lot of YouTubers that I was following all of a sudden started talking about this brand like they offered the best quality products on the planet and you are crazy not to buy them. And they started, you know, that was the time also this affiliate codes and like discount codes started and I I just couldn't wrap my mind around it. I just couldn't understand why people are getting so crazy over these eyeshadows. And of course there were also the brushes and I had the same feeling with the brushes. You know, when I started doing makeup like more seriously, I've, always, I've been doing makeup since I was in high school, but like I really picked it up seriously like five or six years ago. When I started doing my makeup like this um, more seriously, there weren't all that many brush brands available. Zoeva didn't even exist at the time. So there was MAC and there was Dilium Tools, I believe, and maybe some other brands. And I personally was kind of poor at the time, so I couldn't really afford to buy MAC brushes. So I used to buy brushes from this Chinese website called Buying Coins. And when people started talking about Morphe brushes and showing them, it literally looked like, to me personally, like the brand had purchased brushes from the Chinese website and slapped their logo on them. I despise that kind of pushy, aggressive PR. You know, when I think of Morphe, I think of myself as, you know, I'm running down the street as hard as I can and I run, 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 but I am not able to run fast enough and then Morphe catches up with me, then they pin me to the ground and then they shove their discount codes on me down my throat until I gag and I have to throw up. You probably think, well, this is very dramatic, you know, it's just makeup, and I know, but these kind of feelings are the reason why I don't think I will ever purchase from Morphe. That aside, excluding their super weird PR and um, the way they put out products on the market, I'm not interested in their products. I've literally never seen a Morphe product that I thought Hmm, if that didn't have the Morphe logo, I would actually have bought it. Not one single time. So, I'm glad to say that I don't only dislike the brand and the image of the brand, but I dislike their products as well. Like, I've literally never had that itch to purchase from Morphe. The next uh, category of products I'm never going to purchase are anything and everything created by the Jenner Kardashian clan. I don't understand why these people are famous. They have literally nothing to say that's worth hearing. You know what I mean? And I know, maybe you think I'm a snob and I'm an elitist. I, I, yeah, sure, maybe. I don't understand why they're popular and they're considered anything more than some spoiled rich people's kids. Just like once upon a time Paris Hilton was. Nobody ever talks about Paris Hilton anymore. I don't know why people keep talking about the Kylies and the Kims and the Courtneys and whatnot. I cannot even tell them one from the other, to be quite honest with you. I understand celebrities like artists and singers and actors. I, I get that. They are interesting because they're in movies, but they do actually do something. They, they create something. They create movies, they create TV. These people don't create anything, they're just famous for the sake of being famous. I don't really have very hard feelings when it comes to Kim, I think she's pretty, but 
she's boring. And when it comes to her makeup, I think her makeup line is irrelevant at this point. She was just a little too late to the party, her products look like overpriced crap. And what is up with the little teeny tiny penis like contour sticks? What the fuck was up with that? That palette that she created with Mario that I can only remember one shade from and it was the blue. What the fuck was up with that? The palette he created with her holds, doesn't hold a candle to the one he created with Anastasia Beverly Hills. So it baffles my mind and I think Kim is just too late to the party. I'm sorry girl, you're just... no. Not gonna buy your shit. I'm sorry. Oh, and then this is going to get sensitive. Because I have feelings for the other one, Kylie. Kylie Cosmetics? Kylie Jenner? She's Kylie Jenner, correct? So that girl looks like a um, blow-up pleasure doll to me, who wants to play CEO of a big makeup company. I cannot take her seriously. Not for a single second, not with any fiber of my body. She is just... This 19 year old who looks the way I just told you that I think she looks, who thinks she's relevant and important. Aside from the fact that I don't like her and I cannot take her seriously, I also think her makeup is, just like her sister's, overpriced crap. The type of products she's been releasing just have never caught my attention. I never thought they were super innovative, creative and pushing the boundaries. There, there's just nothing about her family her brand, her image or her makeup that interests me in any sort of way. So I'm never going to purchase from Kylie, Kim, Courtney and the whole family. Never. Sorry. Sorry Kardashian clan. I know we're fellow Armenians but... <sighs> no. And to switch gears a little bit and not talk so negatively about the actual people behind the brand, the third brand I want to talk about is not necessarily a brand that I'm never going to purchase from. And I have actually purchased from them in the past, but it's a brand I've kind of lost interest in and that is Tarte. Um, when I was first exposed to the products of Tarte a couple of years ago, they I associated them with great quality, innovativeness. This lady who started her, you know, who, who I think did a PhD in social sciences or chemistry, I'm not really sure, and who started her brand in her basement when she was formulating, you know, the, the first um, cream blushes. I was ready to jump through firing hoops to get a hold of the Tarte blushes because Everyone talked about them, everyone loved them, and they are beautiful, good quality blushes. But in the past 2-3 years, I don't know what's going on with Tarte, but they've basically been releasing the same eyeshadow palette over and over and over and over again. Every time I see a new release from them, I'm like, wait, didn't they just release that? Because that looks exactly like that other thing they released. I don't get it. There is also the lavish Bora Bora trips that just don't vibe with me. I understand that in terms of PR that's much cheaper than paying for a commercial. I get it, it just... It, something about it is not... doesn't sit right with me, so I don't like it. For me, Tarte went from being like a classy lady in her 30s, 35s, you know, who knows who she is, to... Um, hormonal impulsive teenager who has no fucking clue what's going on with their life anymore. I don't know what happened along the road. Did they change owners? Did they change uh, creative directors? Something happened to Tarte and they are irrelevant when, as far as I'm concerned. They don't make anything that's remotely interesting. Those of you who have followed my channel and who follow my Instagram, you're probably very confused why I didn't talk about Kat Von D. The reason I didn't talk about Kat Von D Beauty is um, simply because I don't want to keep talking about the same thing like a broken record. No, I'm not going to purchase anything from Kat Von D anymore, but I also don't want to keep talking about it and keep talking about it because it's just... There's only so many times that I can mention how much I disagree with Kat's stance in life. So I'm really hoping this video didn't turn out to be half an hour long because apparently I'm unable to make videos that are somewhat shorter and more to the point. I just ramble on and on and on for hours, which I'm doing right now and I'm going to stop. Thank you so much for watching. Please do not forget to check out Melissa's video because I am very curious which brand she picked in each category and I'm very curious whether there will be any overlap. Don't forget to like and subscribe. If you're not subscribed to my channel, please consider subscribing. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!